We got some news for the first Descendant. So Magnum Studio earlier today dropped a video that quickly goes through all of the different end game systems that we can expect to be there at launch. And they spent a little bit of time on each one. Now, a lot of this we've seen before if you've gone through all of the dev blogs and you've kept up with all the videos. But for those of us who haven't, let me go ahead and run through these really quick and save you guys a little bit of time. So number one, out of the gate, the devs did recommend collecting as many descendants as you can, which is sort of a no brainer that makes a lot of sense. But for those of you out there who were very specific and like only wanted to play Blair or Bunny, for instance, it's good just to get a variety because that's going to play well into all of the other end game systems. Because something that they mentioned in each and every one of these is that you need to have a good variety for your team. Certain descendants will do better at certain modes and having that descendant active and available is going to make life a little bit easier for you. Okay, so let's get into the first one. This is sort of the newer one that they talked about and those are dungeons, AKA infiltrations. So infiltrations are specialized missions. There's two per zone for a grand total of 16. And each infiltration is going to come with two difficulties, normal and hard. Now the normal difficulty is just that, you're basically playing through the mission on normal, trying to farm out some rewards. But as you shift gears and you unlock hard mode, which unlocks as you progress the story, you're going to be able to earn more rewards. Now, the rewards for these missions are going to be changed at regular intervals, so you don't need to farm a specific mission for a specific reward. If there's a particular infiltration that you really don't like, then you can just wait for that reward to cycle off of that infiltration and onto a different one. Now, we did get an example of these rewards. We can see in this screenshot here for Biolab. Starting from left to right, we have a rare weapon, we have a rare component, and then we have a variety of mods, ranging from rare, which is purple, ultimate, which is yellow, and transcendent, which is that reddish orange. Now, over on the right hand side, you can see that we have a selected reward. So we do have some deterministic stuff here where we can click and select one of those. Then we also underneath that have select more options. Now these select more options are modifiers to make this mission even more difficult. So you can go through and select as many or as few of those as you would like, including you could just leave them all blank if you wanna just go in kind of vanilla. Now, why would you want to do that? Why would you wanna make it particularly harder on yourself? Well, the reason being is as you're going through and you're clearing out these missions or these infiltrations, you're going to accrue points. And the points that you accrue are going to determine the rewards that you will get or bonus rewards that you will get. And by activating more of these modifiers, you're going to get more points per kill, which will allow you to hit those point thresholds much easier. So this is just another way to go through and make life a little bit easier in terms of unlocking rewards and getting the things you need, but obviously more difficult because look at these, you're reducing your health by 10%, your firearm attack by 10%, your defense by 10%. So feel free to experiment with these and find the best one for you. So let's go ahead and let's change gears and let's flip over to the second thing they talked about, and that is special operations. Now, special operations, these are called incursions in the last technical test, and there are going to be eight of them at launch. But of those eight, they cover three different types. So that's blocking Kuiper mining, resource defense, and neutralizing void experiments. So Kuiper mining, you're going to need to kill enemies within a certain time limit in order to clear that wave. Once that wave is cleared, more enemies and more difficult enemies will begin to spawn. Once that wave is cleared, a more difficult wave comes, so on and so forth, until you reach a point where you just simply cannot win. At that point, the incursion will end and you'll gather your rewards. Then the second one is resource defense. Here, you're going to protect a target from enemies for a certain period of time. As you continue to battle waves of enemies, you're going to need to protect that target for a longer period of time, and this cycle is going to repeat until, again, you fail. And then lastly, we have Neutralize Void Experiment. So there's going to be these little bombers, which are these little kind of creatures with bombs on their backs, and they're going to be running away. And you need to go and kill them 
while also surviving enemy assaults. So it's going to be waves of enemies you're going to have to clear and work through as you're trying to get to those fleeing bombers to complete your objective. Just like the previous two, it's going to get more and more difficult until you fail. The whole point of this is to try to last as long as possible and progress by killing enemies and completing objectives, which will then earn you rewards. The devs did say that these are more of the challenging missions in the game, and I would agree. When I did these during the technical test, they ramped up in terms of difficulty very, very quickly. The first couple waves were okay, but then the scaling after that was insane. And we quickly were overrun, outnumbered, and just destroyed. I think we lasted four or five waves, and then after that, we were just ground to dust. So if you're looking for something challenging, this is one to go for. Next, we have Void Intercept. So here, these are basically just giant boss battles. Void Intercept, we've had these since the first beta that we've had access to, and they're continuing to grow over time. So these boss battles, they bring unique mechanics to the fold. You're going to have to use specific strategies in order to defeat them. And this is really where the dev team hammered home the concept of bring a variety of descendants each run to make sure that you have everything you need, whether that's clearing out AOE, whether that's single target damage, whether it's crowd control, protection, defense, all of those different things. You don't want to just run in there with a glass cannon team because they account for that. And some of these bosses will absolutely crush that team to dust. So making sure to bring a varied team is what you want to do. Now, why do you want to run Void Intercepts? What's different between the other two? Well, Void Intercepts are a fantastic place to farm for materials to unlock Descendants and Ultimate Weapons. We've seen this during the technical test and the betas. This is the spot you would go to grind out Bunny Unlock Materials, Glay Unlock Materials, Blair Unlock Materials. All of the different Descendants have at least one material tied to Void Intercepts. So this is a system you definitely do not want to skip out on. So guys, that is everything that they covered in this dev talk that they released earlier today. Now for me, I think these are three solid kind of starting foundational end games. You have one that's wave based, one that's more difficulty based and timing based. Then you have one boss battle one, it's very grandiose in an arena, but I do wanna see them build upon this. For instance, I would love to see raids in the future or even like a rogue light type of mode that goes into the game. Two of those things I think would be great to see. But I wanna hear from you guys. So in the comments below, what do you think so far about the first Descendant? Does this get you excited to actually jump into the game on launch day, which is July 2nd? And what Descendant are you going to unlock first? Let me know guys. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you next time.